Welcome to Admin Setup for Users, the Security Information section. Begin by selecting the Admin tab, scrolling down to Users, and then we'll, we will be going over this section right here in the middle, the Security Information section. This section is going to cover the setup of the security information for each of your individual users. So you'll be able to customize based on your employees what privileges that you would like for them to have within Atom Software. So the first one, for minutes allowed to punch in early, this, is, this applies if you are using Adam's punch clock. If you would like to put in a, a control for how early an employee can punch in. So for an example, if the employee's work schedule is set from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., and if we put a 5 here, that means that they are only allowed to punch in 5 minutes early. If this employee happened to punch in at 8.45, if they punched in 15 minutes early, it's automatically going to adjust it and have them only punch in 5 minutes early. And the same thing works for minutes allowed to punch in late. If you want your employee to not be able to punch out late, then if you, again, put five minutes here, if they punched out at 5.15, Adam's going to adjust it and automatically punch them out at 5.05. So that's just a little bit of an extra control related to the punch clock if that's something that you needed. If it's left blank, then the employees um, are able to punch in or out at any time regardless of what the work schedule says. The next one for email assigned task or events. If this box is checked, then anytime this employee, this user, has an email, um, has a task assigned to them, or a note assigned to them within the events, it's automatically going to go into go here also. So whatever is entered into this email field, whether it's a personal email or a cell phone number, then they would receive a, ta a text. So if, if you're not in the office, but you still want to be notified when things are assigned to you, if you check, check that box, then those events will be assigned to you. And the same thing will happen for email system messages. So anytime, if this box is checked, anytime you get a message within Atom, and if you want that to be notified of that in your personal email or cell phone, you can check that box. And then again, you're not in the office, you can still kind of keep track on to what's going on in the office if there's something that you needed to address. This comment section, this would be if you have any, just any notes related to the employee that you wanted to be, to keep track of. And only the administrator can see these notes. So if you type something in here, the employee will not even be able to see their own notes unless they have admin rights within the system. The next one is for appoint, appointment notification type. This is if you would like to be notified when someone schedules an appointment for you. Again, it's going to go into your, to your messages. You would get an a system message within Atom, and then if you have this box checked, you're also going to get it into whatever is in this email field. So the choices here, if I want just my appointments that are requesting me as a preparer, I would choose this one. If I want just any appointments that are scheduled under my name, whether they're requested or not, so all my appointments would, would show everything. The non-requested appointments is going to show the ones that just are scheduled but don't, don't necessarily request me. If I would like to see all the appointments that are scheduled for all of my sites, I could choose that one. Or if you would like to see all the appointments for all of your sites. So that means every time any appointment is scheduled, you're going to get notified of that. Probably the one that's going to be used most is going to be the My Requested Appointments. I just want to know when somebody requests an appointment and they want to see me. But if you would like to have more options and see more appointments, you do have that availability here. For login screens allowed, Adam allows for either a normal login or a user portal login. 
If you choose the user portal login, that's restricted. And that means if somebody logs in, they do not have client access. They are able to do things like check their messages and their work schedule, um, but they do not have access to your clients. So that's probably, you know, if your employees are checking work schedules and things from home, you may want them to use the user portal login so they don't have access to your clients. The normal login does give them full access to whatever their security settings are set on this page. Probably one of the other only times that you would really need to use or want to use the user portal login would be for bookkeeping. If you happen to have some of your bookkeeping clients and they are using Adam as a punch clock, you would want to set them up as just the user portal login so that they would have access to your punch clock, but they wouldn't have access to your clients. Okay, next is employee hour edit permissions. You can choose for each individual user if they if you want them to not be able to adjust any hours on the punch clock, or they can adjust their own hours on the punch clock, they can adjust all the entries on the punch clock, or entries for just the particular site. So if you have, for say, an office manager at a different site, and you want them to be able to adjust their employees' hours for that location, otherwise only the administrator does have access to adjust hours on the punch clock. So if, if each employee, if you don't want to be notified or bothered each time somebody forgets to punch in or punch out, and if you have a trusted employee, then you can choose this, where maybe they could edit the, permission, the, the hours for their site. Uh, signed by default for client portal emails. If this one is checked, then this is, this is nice for during maybe the off season when you might not be in Atom as much as you are during, during tax season. So every time your office receives a message through the client portal, then you would be notified of it. So again, you, if you have email or text information up here in the email field, every time that your office gets a portal message then you would be notified so then you would know to log into Adam and to check those portal messages. View total hours in work schedule. If this box is checked then that user would be able to view total hours in a work schedule and I can show you where you would see that. If you are on the work schedule, if you can see here that this user, Dave, is scheduled to work 17 hours for the whole week so far. If that is not checked, then it's not going to show the total number of hours there. The reason that that might be nice would be for somebody who's in charge of setting up your work schedules. If they're trying to keep the employees hours, you know, under 40 hours, then Adam keeps track of it right there. Then they don't have to worry about trying to add up all the individual hours for all the employees because they are displayed right there within the work schedule. Disregard availability schedule. If you have employees who are, you know that they're available, Monday through Friday, 9 to 5, and that's, that's given and that's known and their schedule doesn't vary, then you can disregard the availability schedule. And we also have the same thing for disregard work schedule. In the past, we've always had to build an availability schedule, build a work schedule before we could schedule any client's appointments. Now, if you would like to skip those steps, you can do that per user. Some users, you may want them to have a work schedule set up or an availability schedule set up, but if, if it's pretty consistent within your office and you know when people are coming and going, then you do not have to do those steps first. You can disregard the work schedules and availability schedules. Allow to view other users' tasks. If that box is checked, then this user is able to see other users' tasks. 
So you may want your, your office managers to be able to view tasks to make sure those tasks are being done. Preparers or receptionists, maybe they don't need to see what's assigned to other people. So you can choose who you would like to be able to see users' tasks. Allow event modification. Again, you, know, you kind of want to be careful probably who you want to allow to modify or edit or delete events. Um, because if they are deleting things or modifying events that you don't want them to do, you have to sort of be careful of that. So if you are in a client's file, grab a client here. So let's say we moved this client to cashier and we saved it. Oh, and fill up preparer here. Okay, we move this client to cashier, and then this is going to show your office events. So only those people who you've checked that box to allow event modification will have this edit pencil. If they do, if you don't check that box, they won't have this edit pencil, and they will not even be able to modify these events. You know, maybe maybe I wanted to change the status of this one. It wasn't really the lobby. It's really supposed to be today's office task. I can change that, but that might not be something that you want to give permission for all of your users to do. Okay, the next one is going to display lobby record count on header. If you say yes here, display on selected site, you can see here that we have 100 people sitting in our lobby for this selected site. If, if, that user, if that user does not want to see, maybe it's a receptionist, maybe they know how many people are sitting in their lobby and they don't want to see that, you can say none. But if somebody's office is not near the lobby and maybe it's upstairs and they want to see how many people are sitting in the lobby and so they know they need to come do a tax return, they can have that displayed so it will always show how many people are sitting in the lobby. Works very similar for display current appointments on header. If this box is checked, this is going to pop up whenever you have an appointment, they've walked in, they've checked in the lobby, it's going to tell you. Your 1030 appointment is here. It's also going to tell you how long they've been sitting in the lobby. So you could be in your office finishing up with one client and you can see when your next client walks in the door so you, you know you need to wrap up with your current client and keep your appointments on track. Display expanded client information section. If this box is checked, then is what will happen is every time when this user goes into a client's file, it will automatically expand that client information section. So if we grab a client out of the lobby here, and that box is checked to expand this section. If that box is not checked, then when we get into a client's file, it's going to look like this. It will not show all that additional contact information. So it just depends on what that user wants to see or what you want that user to be able to see. Restrict user access to his or her default site. Everybody has a default site set up here under the personal information section. And if you want that user only to be able to access things on that site, the clients on that site, then you can choose that box and they will only be able to see information pertaining to that site. Then you can go ahead and save and all of your, sa all of your changes have been made to the security information section. Thank you.